Oh, hey there, name's Todd. Bet you're wondering what I'm doing here. Figured you were. Last week we had varsity basketball tryouts and it didn't go very well. Yeah, as you can see, I didn't make the team. I'm not very good. So I decided to invest in a personal trainer and I went to Trainers R Us, but they were too expensive. So then I went to Craigslist, like literally my friend Craig who had a list of people that he recommended. So now I'm waiting on my friend Craig's mom's cousin's brother's dog's trainer or something. Yep, that be me. My name's Tony, Tony the trainer. Sorry I was late. I was teaching Charlie how to roll over. Is Charlie a toddler? Does he not know how to roll over? Nah, Charlie's a cocker spaniel. <laughs> what? You're literally a dog trainer? How are you gonna teach me how to play basketball? Hey, you listen here. I have happened to have trained one of the most phenomenal basketball players of all time. Oh yeah? Who? You ever heard of Air Bud? Are you kidding me? You mean a dog that was in a movie about playing basketball? That wasn't real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's as real as the hair on my toenails, okay? Now, are you ready to learn some lessons or what? I mean, if you think you can teach me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not the one that didn't make the team and had to hire a trainer. It wasn't my fault I didn't make the team. I tried to find my good luck charm and bring it to the tryouts, but I couldn't find it. What was your good luck charm? My lucky parrot. Your lucky parrot? Yeah, his name's Petey. Okay, well Petey ain't here, so forget about it. All right, so what am I gonna be learning today? I'm glad that you asked. I thought of some plays that I would like you to learn. Cool, what are they? Okay, the first play is called the turnip trick. First you go over here and you find yourself a moose. Doesn't have to be a big moose, but just a little moose, okay? You get on the moose's back and you're gonna grab him by the antlers and put the ball right there. What in right the world are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. Okay, I see how it is. You're not gonna be able to follow my game plan. Come with me. So what exactly are we doing here? It's simple, shortstop. I'm here to teach you how to do an alley-oop. What? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You don't have to be in an alley to do an alley-oop. Oops. All this is ridiculous. Well then, let me teach you the pick and roll. Finally, something I can understand. Okay, so the pick and roll is when you distract the other player by picking the nose, and then you roll away with the ball and shoot it in the basket. Are you kidding me? This is getting way out of hand. You claim to be teaching me a new game plan, but none of this is making any sense. It's like that sometimes. Like what? Well, sometimes the game plan we think we should have is different than the game plan that God has for us. And not just in basketball, but also in life. Uh, I'm confused. Look, you think you know what you're doing with your life? You think you need to follow your game plan? No, 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 forget about it. You need to follow God's game plan. You need to follow what he wants for your life. Yeah, I see what you mean. Good, now the kids today are gonna learn about a pretty awesome promise that God makes to each of us. God's got good plans for your life. It's time for you to dive into God's game plan and learn all about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think so. Hey, did you know that Michael Jordan was afraid of muskrats? Boys and girls, it's Cam. Hey, coming at you with another awesome Bible story. If you have your Bibles, you can open it up to Luke 19. So glad you're viewing online today. I think you've got a treat today about what God's going to teach you. I think it's incredible. Um, it's you know, God's got good plans for you and me. We just got to trust that that God's going to do some awesome things. Uh, as we come to this text in in uh, Luke chapter 19 we get Zacchaeus, who is a wee little man. So if you take your fingers out and you kind of do a little, the small little guy, he was a little guy, and uh, which it's crazy, Zacchaeus was this tax collector who collected money from everyone and, and gave it to the Roman government, but he kept a lot back for himself. And he uh, was very much known as a dishonest man. He was not honest. One day, Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming to town, and he heard that he was a good teacher and that he really heals people, and he loves people no matter what they've done in their past because Zacchaeus, you know, if he was dishonest, he knew that there was something wrong with his relationship with him and God, and so he wanted to kind of make it right. So one day, Zacchaeus was nearby, and Jesus was teaching nearby, and so Zacchaeus 
uh, wanted to go see him. Well, apparently all the time this happened, Jesus would come to a town and a ton of people would go all around Jesus and it would be hard to get to him. And that's, that's what happened. So Zacchaeus was so short and small, he couldn't even see it. But Zacchaeus had this, this problem where he was short, small, he couldn't see Jesus. And so uh, this was kind of a, a dilemma for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus knew that he had to do something. And so he found this tree. And I don't know about you, but I love to climb trees. So he got up in the tree and he got up pretty high and he got up high enough where Jesus could see him. And as Jesus was walking by, he looked up at Zacchaeus. And he said, Zacchaeus, come down from there. Uh, from going to your house today. I want to go to your house today. Now, the religious people that were there couldn't believe it. They were shocked that they would, he would even want to go to Zacchaeus' house, a, a guy who was dishonest and who was not nice and who was all this. And they were kind of like bickering, like, oh, why, would, why would you come to his house? So how could Jesus possibly hang out with hang out with a man like that? How could he do it? I don't know. What's going on with my camera? I just moved it. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah. how could you hang out with a man like that? That's just crazy. And so Jesus went and hung out with him and uh, didn't impress the religious leaders. Matter of fact, they were frustrated. They were shocked that he would do that. But Jesus knew that Zacchaeus needed to know him and to love him and to understand him. And so, boys and girls, it's so important to know that no matter what you've done in your past, Man, Jesus loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. And Zacchaeus did that. He wasn't ignored by Jesus, even though he was small, even though he was short, and even though he was dishonest and it wasn't a good man. Jesus still loved him and he still loves you and he cares for you as well. And sometimes you might be dishonest or, or I might be dishonest, but Jesus still loves us no matter what. And that's what we got to understand today. that Jesus cares for us no matter what we do. Jesus cares for us when no one else will. You see, Jesus will do that. He'll care for us like nobody else. And uh, Jesus did this. This is so important to know, too, that Jesus came to save the lost people like Zacchaeus. He came to save you and me so that we can have a relationship with him. Um, I love the verse in Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. You see, God has future plans for you and for me. God has great plans for us. Jesus cares for us when nobody else will. No matter how hard or how bad some things you've done in your past, like if you've lied or cheated or been dishonest, man, Jesus has a plan for you because he forgives you and he loves you. He has a plan for your life. When following Jesus' plan, everything changes. Your life changes. Your your the way you talk changes when you experience Jesus' forgiveness and his grace. Your life changes completely, and it comes completely different than what it was before you introduced yourself to Jesus. It's a life change. So that's so very important for us to know and to follow, and how important it is to know that Jesus wants our relationship with us. So let's review real quick. We had Zacchaeus, who was a wee little man. He was a small guy. Jesus came by and said, hey, I'm coming to your house today and I want to be in a relationship with you and love you through whatever you've done in your past. I'm going to forgive you. And then Jesus says he's going to care for Zacchaeus when nobody else would. He's going to care for you and for me when nobody else will. He will stand for us. And no matter how many bad things we've done, Jesus has a plan for you and for me. That is so good. And then also, when you follow Jesus, everything changes. Everything changes. So boys and girls, with that Bible story today, I pray you've been encouraged to know that God has a plan for you and he has a plan for your life and he loves you and he wants you to know him more and more each day as you continue to walk with him and grow with him and follow him. So I pray you're having a great day today. Look forward to seeing you when we get a chance to see you. I hope you're being safe. Hope school's going well as you get started back in and, uh, just remember that Jesus loves you. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we're going to do a memory verse, I believe, here on video. We're going to end our verse today. God, thank you so much for these kids. Thank you for their hearts. Thank you so much for this Bible story. I pray that their hearts will be drawn to you and that they'll understand that you love them and care for them like no one else. God, we love you in your name. Amen. See you, boys and girls. Regina Teast, but nobody
nobody goes by Regina anymore, so you can just call me R. Artiste. Now, I'm just working on a painting right now, but I think I need a break. So I thought that you could help me with today's power verse. See, the problem is I sleepwalk at night. And last night as I was painting the power verse, I started using pictures instead of words. So now I need you to help me figure out what it's supposed to say. Let's take a look at it. For eyeball. Oh no, I bet it's I. No, the blueprint. Hmm, what could that word be? <gasps> Plans. I have for you, says the Lord. They are, oh, plans for thumbs up. No, that can't be it. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Oh, good, and not for disaster. To give you a, ah, oh, is that a calendar? With the year 3000? Well, that's far into the future. <gasps> Sure, I bet that's it. And a hope. Jeremiah 29 11. That's it! Great job, boys and girls. Now, let's make sure that we don't forget it. So, everyone, stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29 11. Great job everyone, you can all have a seat. Now would you like to see what I've been painting today? <laughs> see, this morning I had something new for breakfast and I was inspired to paint it because it was so beautiful. But I'm going to warn you, you should not try this for breakfast because I've had a tummy ache all day. Anyway, what I had for breakfast today was Rainbow beans and rainbow milk. Doesn't it just look wonderful? But it's not, I promise, don't eat it. Anyway, that's my lovely painting of the day. Now thank you all again for your help today. I'll see you later, boys and girls. Bye-bye. You know I gotta tell you what you gotta know. Tell you what you gotta know. You know you gotta know, tell you what you gotta know. Hey kids, it's me, Callie from the Valley, and I'm like here to tell you like what you gotta know. I'm like so excited to start a brand new series called Game Plan. Today we're like talking about how God has like totally cool plans for us. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will follow God's amazing plan. People are always like, Callie, what are your plans? What are you gonna do with your life? Like, where's Waldo? I'm like, first of all, Waldo's hat is like so last year. A grody. Second of all, I don't know what my plans are. I'm not like good enough to do totally awesome things with my life. But then God, he's like, girl, yes you are. Follow me and everything will change. It's like, okay God, you're right. No matter what I've done, if I follow you, you have an awesome plan for my life because you like care about me. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will follow God's amazing plan. And that is what you gotta know. I'm Callie from the Valley saying TTYL. Yeah, your love is deeper than me. 
Thank you.